laid back vibe, baby. Everybody, welcome into another special edition of Sketchy and Funny from Tommy Bell Art. I'm Tommy Bell. Check this out, gang. I've got a couple of really big announcements before we get into my next drawing for this show. The first one, uh, you know what? The hell with the announcements. First thing I got to do is introduce my co-host and the voice of the LFC Laundry Fighting Championships podcast, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance. Yeah, it's the social media magnet, Mr. Michael Larkin. Hello, Michael. I'm good, Tommy. First of all, first and foremost, man, thank you so much. And we have a great guest in store for everybody tonight. We have a great drawing for you, Mr. Artis. So I'm excited for today's forum. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, that's going to be part of my major announcements. The first thing that I want to announce to both my viewers out there, you guys, I know you're watching. <laughs> the first thing I want to say is this is it. That's right. This is the final episode for season one, sketchy and funny. I'm doing everybody a solid by giving you a Tommy Bell dozen, and that's ending the season one at 11 episodes. But that's how we're doing it because I can't think of a bigger, better way to top the show than with a special guest that we have on today. And Michael, Michael, I got to tell you, I'm a little nervous. And here's why. Here's, here's I always get a little bit jittery before each show, so the cat's out of the bag. Uh, but speaking of cats, we've got a special guest tonight who um I, i've never worked with before and we just connected just recently because of my fascination with a video that i saw that she's in and it's i'll get into that a lot more michael larkin please help me welcome our special guest tonight skylar Calico. Calico. oh thank you for having me it's an absolute pleasure. It's, um, I mean, I'm going to start explaining exactly how I, you know, let's face it. I'm, I'm not even in my forties anymore. I'm in my fifties and social media is a real challenge for me, no matter how I do it. And I'm embarrassed sometimes to say, like I'm going to right now, I just found out about you a couple of months ago. Um, before that, our paths had never crossed. My my attention didn't, you know, it just wasn't there. So it's kind of embarrassing. But this video put out by Bay Fights, my friends at Bay Fights, did this incredible video. They do all kinds of crazy cool content. You, you got to check them out, bayfights.com. There's my shout out to Bay Fights because this is also a spotlight on, on their work because it was this video with you and Tyler Lynn. It was just absolutely amazing. Uh, and Michael, I got to tell you, I've only really watched this particular video about four or 5,000 times. So I haven't really dove into it the way I need to, but it's, it's as soon as I saw this one time, I knew what a, what a drawing this would be somehow. Like, you know how my brain works, you know? And I just immediately started picturing it in Tommy Bell Artland. And, and I tried to, divorce myself from it saying I don't really know these people and I've got a lot to do but it, it wouldn't leave and so it, it just it became this is how I'm kicking off 2024 is with this drawing called castaways which is just an amazing idea and and this this clip that Bay Fights put out with Skylar Calico and Tyler Lynn man it's just magic <laughs> That's the beauty of it, man. I think what a lot of people can tell from watching Miss Skyler over here and the great fights that we see from Bay Fight, what's the mixture of wrestling, cat fighting, and just overall sensuality mixed with some physicality. I think it really does great as to give a shot light and a spotlight on this woman right here. So, Tommy, I cannot wait to see you get to the drawing table and do the damn thing. We're going to hop right over here, uh, Michael, and I'm going to, yeah, before I waste too much time yabbering away, like, I can yabber while I draw, so let's do this. So, Michael, Skyler, to everybody, this is Castaways, done off of this amazing photo supplied to me by Bay Fights from this outstanding clip of theirs that I started talking about. 
This is the castaways drawing over here on this side. And just to make an art show out of it, I'm going to show you real quick. I got a boatload of pencils, right? Um, which is basically the colors that I use for flesh tones normally. And because they both kind of got blonde hair with, with darker under stuff here, I've got a whole bunch of, just to make this an art show, we've got dark brown and then we've got a bunch of other bullshit all the way to white. So there you go. There it is. <laughs> and uh, I may even be clever enough to tell you when I'm switching from one color to the next. But as we kind of kick off the conversation, I'm just going to kind of hop in here and start doing a few things. So I'm always going to start with a dark color because, again, dark colors on paper, especially like I'm doing this totally old school Skylar. So, uh, you know, it's colored pencils and it's regular paper. If I spill something on it, I'm screwed, that kind of thing. Um, but when you're working with color, the darker the color, the harder it is to get rid of it if you don't do it right. So I start by putting in just a little bit here and there. And I'm just kind of working with the darkest color first. Because then like when I'm blending, if I'm blending flesh tones or your shirt or whatever, it, it for whatever reason, it makes a much easier blend when I'm working from dark to light. So that's why I do that. I didn't know that. It's just, it's, 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 an, I don't even know if it's a, something that's taught. It's just something that I figured out by screwing it up so many times. <laughs> and eventually you're like, okay. hey, shit, okay. I, got I used it. to do a lot of sculpture, but I never really got into 2D art. I used to do a lot of metal sculpture. But... Oh, no kidding. Yeah, I was a welder. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I a of... <laughs> now I fight people <laughs> on camera. <laughs> That's why it's, this is so cool to have you on as a special guest, Skylar, because now I'm going to find out all kinds of crazy cool stuff about yeah. you, you know, and so are, I mean, Michael Teller, this thing is on the LFC VIP section of their website. Yeah, uh, on the Lingerie Fighting Championships website for the VIP section where we get to see a lot of great Tommy Bell's artwork. And I think what's great about it too as well, and I'll add on to Skylar's amazing imagery that we get to see within her photos here, folks. I think you, like you mentioned, the metal side of things, doing the welder side of things, the physicality, now you're fighting in front of the camera. I think when you have that nice mix and blend of fetish modeling meets fighting, what have you, we talk about sensuality and overall physicality. I think everything that goes into it, and as I see the images of Skylar here, you have a lot of great, like, I'm going to say it's like sass it's like hard rock it's also something that you would see like out of an ink magazine if you will from the tattoos that are expressed so there's a lot that really goes into taking amazing photos and skylar you do take amazing photos and it really showcases through in your work so i think a lot of people are going to see just a lot of greatness going for you into the continued future thank you so much i mean i've, I've been modeling for five years um i welded for a little while and, and things like that but um i really do take pride in my photos and, and obviously, you know, I'm super excited. I'm going to be covered in tattoos at some point. It's just a matter of like, I shoot so often on the fetish modeling side. And a lot of these things are super physical that I have to take like a couple a week to a couple of weeks off between big tattoos. And so it's like, I'll be like, I'm not shooting for two weeks. And everybody's like, ah, and I'm like, what did I get? <laughs> I have to get body that needs to get done you know i just got my medusa worked on on my stomach um i got another thigh to do to match my other one and things like that but um yeah on for, for the physicality side you know i i started dancing uh pole dancing in fuck 2016 um wow. i really fell in love with it i competitively danced i you know now i'm I guess I can officially call myself a feature entertainer. I have a feature booking, but I was become a feature entertainer for a long time and things like that. And that takes like a lot of upper body. And then I actually worked with, I don't know if you guys are like WWE fans or anything. Um, <laughs> yeah. So do you remember the nasty boys from the eighties? Oh my goodness. Brian Knobs and Jerry Sags. Yes. And Ron Galetti originally yes. nasty Ryan. Okay. Has, who I mean, he's had the band Nasty Savage forever. I was the Unchained Angel for Nasty Savage. Oh my goodness! Okay, fair enough. Nice. Yeah. Well, look at that, Michael. I, 
<laughs> I did sweet shows and all that. And then I got into local indie wrestling and I was a valet. I was looking into, um, you know, joining the WWE and, you know, going to wrestling school and all of that. And then I basically got called because of my history with the adult industry. They weren't going to take me. And I was like, I'll go do it in bikinis and go do it naked. <laughs> and so that's where a lot of like my background on the wrestling and fighting side comes from. Obviously, you know, I, I did MMA for quite a while and looking to get back into MMA. I'm looking Krav Maga, possibly, because I really just want to be able to break phones. Well, Skyler, <laughs> Skyler can I ask? Because, I, I mean, I just, at this point now, I have to. Thought about doing anything for the LFC? Um, I really, yeah, I totally would. Um, really? I have not really been reached out to yet. And well, you're I, talking to two guys who might be able to, you know, make a few connections because I would love to see you at Laundry Fighting Championships. I think she do. I've sat cool. there and judged. I've judged an event. Michael has ring announced a few events, and I could say you'd be an amazing fit in Laundry Fighting Championships. I would totally be down. I mean, those are those are live events, right? They're like actual. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that we actually, that Tommy and I were at, were at the FSW Arena. For those who are not familiar with FSW, Future Stars of Wrestling is one of the premier independent wrestling promotions in Las Vegas. And this is where the WWE comes in with currently carrying Cross and guys like Eli Drake, LA Knight went through that school. Chris Bay over there in Impact Wrestling has been through that school. So they've done a lot of great events in Las Vegas. Its home headquarters are mainly Las Vegas. But yeah, it, it's, and obviously LFC's going to Florida at the end of February, but it's live. It's, it's fun. It's entertainment. It's pageantry it's glitz but it, it's also at the same time it's it's just fun you know i, mean, I think that's the best thing that you mentioned like we talked about the entertainment business and you so eloquently meant the, mentioned the indies over here when you're an indie wrestling man it's just being a valet and just being around the local promotions because you see a lot of the stomping grounds the proving grounds for where you go on to wwe so there's so much wrestling out there that a lot of people look at it from the wwe landscape and other different wrestling promotions etc but there's something about an indie feel the underground if you will so to speak it's like the underground of wrestling but we don't talk about it with Fight Club, but we do talk about independent wrestling. So there's the vice versa on that. Definitely. Again, Michael, I could see her being a great fit for the LFC. I could see her doing a whim, uh, athletes on fire. I could yeah. see that. I could see the women on fire thing. I could see Skylar. <laughs> I could see some. I could. I could see you doing something. Not that I'm trying to talk you in, Danny. That that's not the point of this show. But all of a sudden, you just started saying, "Hey, I'm looking into doing this, and I've done this and that." And I'm going, "Hey, how about this?" Right. I mean, because I got to thank my friends at Laundry Fighting Championships for the past three years of being so insanely supportive and good to me, and been a huge chunk of my portfolio work, Michael. I mean, just. Lots of draw. I don't even know how many drawings we're we're at for the LFC at this point in time. But boy, could you see Skylar in there, dude? Oh, dude, I think it would be amazing to see a woman like Skylar and so many women. As as the show apropos titles with my message of beauty, strength, and dominance for the LFC, I mean, you have to look at it from a stance too as well when it comes to women all around. It has the, the F word, so to speak, the foundation, if you will. And Skylar, I include you in the, those sentiments. When you look at a woman like a Skylar Calico over here, folks, we talk about foundation, we talk about internal and external beauty, and what really makes women the work of art that they are. So we get to see not only the beauty aspect and the physicality and the overall just evoking emotions, that gravitational pull it's a character you're amped up and i can definitely see within your work and the physicality that you bring skylar calico whether it be bay fights or what have you you're always amped up man and i can dig that from the character side of things and you just being you with the volume turned up because that's what it's all about mm -hmm. absolutely every time i get on camera whether i'm shooting you know wrestling fighting um something that they're like oh we're just gonna like tickle you or anything else i love being on camera i love being the center of attention to put it lightly, um, I, I've <laughs> always loved being characters and being this, like, the more you give me, as long as it's not down to the finite, finite details, like, if you're like, do this at this second, I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. This is all improv. The more you say, okay, this is how the character is constructed and everything else, I can come at you with a full character. I was really excited. Um, so the picture that you're drawing right now, I was really, really excited for this one because... Um, we were in the pool and I realized that I could throw Tyler Lynn around. 
and that, uh, you know, there was, there was less of a risk of like her like, putting her head and like not waking up or like seriously getting injured. And so right. I, you know, in the middle of it, I had to like pull her up a couple of times. I'm like, are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> because I'm literally just throwing her, dunking her in the water, everything else. Um, if I remember her exact words, like, we had got together once previously and and she after that she looked at me and she goes oh shit you can really fight <laughs> and i was like yes i can honey i have not lost one yet i, I love am, it i am small i am five foot three about a buck 25 but um you know it's it's really about and the core of fighting or wrestling or anything else is looking at all of the things around you that are available to use at your disposal. Well, I'm right? about two what inches. Is... I'm about two inches taller than you, and that's about the only difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, to her point that she made, that's great about. It. I mean, with everything at your disposal and your assets, these subtleties, intricacies, and nuances that goes into about the psychology, the character, if you will, it's really just about being off the cuff, but at the same time keeping it safe and spectacular, but also putting on a doggone good show. So I think for what she's mentioning as well as finding out, like you know, hey, Tyler knows that she can fight and what have you, and dumping her into the water and what have you. There's a lot that goes into, it. and I think from the performance aspect too as well. Damn it, man, it's something for everybody to really go into from the fetish side of things and just fighting in general i think everybody has their own niche their own preference what have you i think that's what makes individuality so wonderful in a way because there's something for everybody and i think the work that you put into it not only do you take pride into it but there's a lot of gravitational pull and evoking emotions that come out through all of us as people all of us as artists applying life in our own crafts if you will so i gotta say that the clip that tommy's drawing is just everything so far that skylar's done folks you got to check out some badassery mixed with a side of just mm, if you will you got that mm factor if you will well, absolutely yeah. does. It really does. And not to cut you off there, Skylar, but um, yeah, you're fine. <clears throat> I mean, literally, that's my enthusiasm over what they did. And then again, that, this clip, folks, if you, you, you got to check it out if you haven't seen it already and, and shame on you for not saying it, you need to check it out. But it just had such an impact on uh, just my my psyche in general that I was just like, I need to uh, I need to draw this. You know, and I mean, I, I see all kinds of stuff, Michael. I've seen stuff up close. I've seen stuff in person. I've seen all kinds of different videos and things. And and there's a lot of stuff where I'm like, oh, wow. I mean, my my brain just works that way. It's kind of fucked up. That's my wife. <laughs> but it but it, uh, it's it's kind of fucked up. But there's so many things where I, I'm compelled to to draw them and, and spend the time. But this one really really stuck with me and i think i i guarantee half of it was tyler lint and half of it was skylar calico because uh, the personality came through right from the beginning of the video where she's standing in this room and she's talking about you know like i'm not here to, to take a take a thumping and get kicked out of here you know like there's this whole attitude that goes on and you can just tell like that actually you wouldn't think so but that kind of art that kind of theater the, that kind of stuff especially in this industry um really adds and so i just i knew immediately that i wanted to recognize uh her performance her character the way her and tyler lynn both pulled off an amazing uh video like their hard work uh I wanted to immortalize that in my little portfolio and just kind of give that Tommy Bell nod of like, not only did I see you, but, but out, out fucking standing. <laughs> Honestly, a lot of my emotions in that like speak of, we were, you know, we were talking about the, the speech in the first room um of okay, this is bullshit. You know, she knocked me out and everything else. A lot of that was real because I met, fights at that con probably oh god uh, a couple weeks prior to shooting this maybe a month i don't i don't remember his timeline because i'm glad with dates but um and i had come to him and i'm like I, I know what i'm doing i can wrestle i can i can fight i can do this like I'm, i really want to work with you you know i'm a tampa bay local yeah let's work together and so i was coming into that first shoot 
And I was like, yeah, I'm gonna dominate. And then, you know, the first video, it was okay, now I'm I'm getting knocked out. And this was kind of the retribution for that that first video that we did. <laughs> um so go go, you know, go nurse your wounds. And I was like, man, and so part of me that that really was real of the okay, I really want to prove myself. I want to prove that I can hey, I don't want to just be, I think when everybody sees me it's like a smaller competitor and they're like they get her 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 butt handed to her and then you know i really was like no i want to like prove i want to like get the dog i want to like i have that fire in me and so a lot of that that first like you know come here and then when we we said go i literally like their speed walked out and threw her in the pool and i'm not sure that she was ready and i should have communicated with her like getting thrown in the pool. I don't really just like shoved her in the pool. Exactly. I saw that. I was like, wow, there's no, gonna, there's not going to be any words at all, is there? <laughs> it was a genuine reaction, honestly. Like her reaction was so genuine of that, like surprise, like what the fuck? My reaction of like, I'm going to shove you in the pool. And then like, was, it was so, <laughs> that was one of the, one of those shoots that was so organic that pretty much the only kind of like any breaks or anything we took was just, okay, I've been dunked under the water for like three minutes straight or whatever. And I need, I need to breathe. I need to catch my breath because we're working right. in water. And so not only are you flailing and fighting, but now you're holding your breath and flailing and fighting. And so we'd both be huffing and puffing on the side going, all right, you're ready to get back in this. And it was, it was not choreographed at all. It was very, very organic. <laughs> And I think honestly, Skylar, probably that's why I I I can't get enough of it, which is so and I mean, I'm just telling you. Um, but because of that, it's it's got a magnetism, at least with me, where I was like, okay, now I want to take that and take that a step further and create my own little Tommy Bell thing where all of a sudden they're castaways on this island. And of course, it's a stare down. It's part of my stare down series. I do several drawings where I capture the stare down thing. And there's always a silhouette of a little guy back here. <laughs> so this one is is building off of that. But because that one was so fluid, um, I mean, there's there's something about it that's really, really enjoyable to watch if, you know, if you're me, especially. Um, I really, for me personally, I loved it's going to sound weird, but I loved the wardrobe. I love these kind of shirts. Uh, I just, I love the whole, the whole look of it and the energy of it. And, and that's why I just, like I told Michael, I said, you know what? This wasn't originally going to be a drawing this early on in the year, but I got to get this thing out of my system. And I got to thank these people or at least do my little Tommy Bell part to let them know, Hey, look, here's somebody who, saw your stuff, saw your hard work, recognizes it and, and wants other people, you know, hopefully through my drawing show and wherever else on social media, whatever to, to check you out, see what all you guys are doing and, and hopefully get as wrapped into it as I did. I'm not sure everybody's going to do a drawing, but I mean, I'm on. Like, this was cool. <laughs> I will say, you know, Tyler Lynn, she is a, a, a phenomenal, um, not only co-star, but just, uh, you know, wrestler to work with where, you know, she and I have that, that really good uh, synergy and that energy of like, we can, it's not, I've worked with other people, n not just like Bay fights, but just in general, right? I've worked mm -hmm. with other people that you'll go in for the tackle and you're like, oh, you're supposed to fall down you know, and you have to stop and, and, and everything else. And one of my favorite things about working with Tyler Lynn in particular is she's adaptive, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'll go for a move that we didn't talk about or whatever else, or it wasn't brought up or she's like, you can do that. Um, <laughs> and, and she's just like, okay, so we're going over here and I'm going to flip you over now. And this is what we're going to do here and blah, blah, blah. And, and there's no, like, we don't have to verbalize it. We don't have to plan nothing else. She just knows in that moment. Well, you I know. hope I'm really got my fingers crossed that I see some more cat fighting content with the two of you in it because I can't seem to get enough of that combination. Uh, 
And I'm sure I've got more to say about that, but I'm just, that's where my she hopes and dreams are at. To me, she reached out to me about two weeks ago um, about collaborating. Oh, yeah. um, so I'm sure if there's a demand for it, you know, both of us were kind of like, okay, so what do we, what do we do? What do we shoot? You know, we, we, we both shoot a, a wide variety of things. You know, I shoot everything from, you know, photos and, and, and fashion photos to straight hardcore. Um, mm -hmm. She doesn't go the hardcore route and things like that. But, um, you know, so we were kind of like, what do we do? You know, what can we market for both of us? But if there is a demand for, you know, people start ordering videos and stuff like that, we are very open to, to more of this content. Like, we'd absolutely love to. She's, she's a phenomenal human to work with. Well, so. I will be uh, chatting with you after the show a little bit more about that folks you know what i'm talking about <laughs> i gotta say just to add on to your point there when you talk about the synergy synergy and the chemistry i mean you look at how and equating to wrestling where a lot of them like you call it in the ring or just you call it just in general because you know what one's thinking just because like we mentioned synergy and chemistry but that's what makes a great bout that's what makes great storytelling psychology and what i also do appreciate too as well like you talk about like the nasty boys and the indies as well like you look at how far wrestling has really come from from the 80s era of the golden age with the hogans of the pipers and the 90s the nwo was all the rage and then on the other side of the coin you had wwf with Shawn michaels and the monday night war then the lead on to the john cena's and the brock lesnar's and the batistas and especially to where we are now in 2023 i think the overall adaptation and the evolution of wrestling is great and i get to see women like yourself doing the damn thing of so many different avenues at you know facets of life what have you in regards to wrestling i think it's great to see not only just that more talents coming into that but i gotta tell you first and foremost man being the valet like you mentioned with the indies you think of valets like the miss elizabeth's if you will the sensational sherry martell's that's a hell of a history right there that you can add to your package as a character as a valet yeah i mean working as a valet it, it's all character it's <laughs> all um you you know for anybody who doesn't know what a valet does so you basically you you don't take a lot of hits mm -hmm. um mostly because you're not trained to take the hits you when you're a wrestler you should really only work with other trained wrestlers because you know you're doing these these feats that like if you don't fall a certain way you know, that can be a career ending you know injury and things like that injuries do happen in the sport and things like that but um being a valet was a great opportunity for me to you know take a couple light hits learn a couple falls things like that but mostly just build this character my character is is you know, in my own when I don't have a character that they give to me is is very much based off of like Rhea Ripley. Is, a brutality, yes. The judgment days are yes. you know, I don't know if you see <laughs> from the the Mohawk and the look and everything else. Um I mean I've had a Mohawk since before I knew it was Rhea Ripley. But and I think the fortune <laughs> Mohawk. Um but it kind of just happened at the same time and I'm like, you know what? I will never be as massive as she is, but I I absolutely adore her um i love the just the badass like i'm here to fuck shit up i'm the wrecking ball like aggression and dominance <laughs> that she has versus you see a lot of the a lot of other female wrestlers they're like oh i'm so pretty and dainty and blah blah blah. like yeah i'm a girl and i can kick ass but you know i i really do love a good heel <laughs> no, i'm right there with you <laughs> Rhea Ripley, now, I'll, we'll talk about Rhea Ripley here. For those that don't know, Mommy on the WWE television, folks. Mommy, if you will. One of the best characters going today. And really, ever since she started, like, when she started with the blonde hair, and, you know, she's in the Mae Young Classic, and she's doing all this to, to see her growth to where she is now. I mean, her as a heel, just being this badass, she really found her confidence along the way, but also at the same time, that metal vibe, that music, and everything that goes into her, that's her. That's authenticity right there. But also at the same time, man, there's something about her, even though if she's a heel, whether she's she's a baby face what have you you're drawn to her and i think that's the best type of characters and the best type of wrestlers like you mentioned aria ripley like a beth phoenix like a china if you will i mean yes you had yeah. your kelly kelly's and you had your eve torres's and whatnot the eye candy they look good but they try they do the damn thing but also at the same time it's like when trish came in and trish stratus grew to leaps and bounds but then here's alita over here doing a doggone hurricane run off the top rope and it's like what in the world where have you been all my life woman and then here comes this fiery redhead alita out the gate so there's something for everybody and there's so much different variety in wrestling, but Rhea Ripley has hitting on all cylinders, and she is right up here with the pedestal right now with women's wrestling. Absolutely, she's she's just a, a 
phenomenal entertainer, a phenomenal wrestler. And and there's something beautiful about watching her like take all that eye candy and just bend them into a pretzel. Yep. You know? And like kind of part of me wishes that I was that eye candy in that moment, but you know, it's fine. Um, <laughs> Like, just saying, Maria, if you ever see this, I am so down. <laughs> it's all about that personality, Michael. Like we say, you know, those people, <laughs> they're larger than life. Yes, man. That's what I'm saying. That's why you should be checking out Mommy, man. Mommy Rhea Ripley with Dom Dom and the rest of the Judgment Day, which I'm going to say right now, people talking wrestling, where you look at the bloodline with Roman Reigns and what he's got going over there. I got to say, man, the Judgment Day is just right up there with that top near, that top notch, if you will. There's so many large in life, like Tommy mentioned, personalities, and much like Skyla over here so eloquently put it, man. It's the goth vibes. It's that overall, you know what, I'm going to paint my face, give it a little black and a little purple with the lipstick with everything that goes about her. It's the ambiance, if you will, that aura. And there's a lot of people that have that ambiance and aura to it. The double A's, if you will. I know I'm not talking about the attitude adjustment like John Cena. I'm talking about the ambiance and aura. But there's a lot to that really goes into the art and the craft. And I think that's what we get to see, not with only in wrestling, but you over here, T-Bell, drawing away, doing the damn thing with your artistry, Bay Habe. Well, I'm giving it a shot again. Like I said, I think now, finally, I've gotten over my initial nerves for this show <laughs> but uh given what we're doing with the hair here i've jumped around to a bunch of different colors because i'm kind of into some highlights and as skyler can attest there's a lot of color going on in the hair uh in her character in this in this video and in this drawing because i wanted the drawing to be that is actually a washed out pink that I did about two weeks prior. I'm constantly changing my hair color, so it's it's a little more on the blonde side. But yeah, it it was it was. <laughs> well, what I'm doing is taking a little bit of artistic license, and I'm going to add some pink in there because you can't get past it. But I'm also just kind of smushing together in some form or fashion some of these other colors so it's it's actually probably oh, yeah. going to look a little darker than this and probably not as pink as what was there in reality but in Artland, that's okay because the sky back here i'm going to do like this yeah. really cool looking uh sunset thing sure. to it and that's good yeah, no, make... my, my hair is is almost impossible to get one color from at any point because there's always at least you know five six seven colors in it Good. So, like the artistic license is totally valid and warranted because I, depending on the picture and the angle and the lighting, you're like, that's this color. Oh, wait, no, it's that color. Oh, wait. <laughs> you know, I know right now my hair looks black. It's actually purple, like as of right this moment. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, that puts me even more at ease. You just keep adding color and I will too. Yeah, it's constantly changing, constantly, like, I know I should, like, for branding purposes, be like, everybody keeps telling me, they're like, stop dyeing your hair, keep your hair one color, and I'm like, I can't. <laughs> we tried, I was like, what are you and then the black kept washing out and going to purple, I haven't made it purple. Hey, it's just the what's... black hair dye washing out and turning it purple. Maybe that's what it's supposed to be, then, you gotta go with it. Yeah, it's yeah. Really got the black and the purple, which is always a nice mix. I mean, that's it's one of the things where you look at many different hair colors. That's another aesthetic and accessory that really goes into it. I think we notice as well with Skylar, like we talk about your imagery beforehand. I mean, it, I think it doesn't matter what hair color you're at. I think it adds to just the ambiance of the photo and the overall imagery. But I got to say, first and foremost, and we got to go back to the tattoos here for a second, because the body is the temple. And man, we're just painting our canvases, if you will, from the body front. You talk about the Medusa. I wanted to ask you about the tattoos, because some of the very important pieces that I have on my arm. One's dedicated to my love of God and one's dedicated to my grandfather who passed when I was nine. So meaningfulness, meaning that goes into tattoos. And I can definitely see it on your body, but what we get to see the assortment of your tats right now, Skylar. So I got to ask you, what are some of the favorite tattoos that you have? Because you mentioned the addicting feeling of just wanting more, so to speak, because that's the beautiful thing about tattoo work and just tattoos in general. But what's some of the favorite tattoos that you have that you really like or most proud of? I mean, like, for me, tattoos are just kind of like taking what's on the inside and portraying it in some way on the outside. I, I want to be, you know, I want to call myself a human coloring book and, and be covered. Um, 
So my Medusa, obviously, you know, is very, very important to me. It's actually a broken face Medusa, um, which kind of puts a whole nother spin on, you know, the Medusa tattoo and kind of like reclaiming, you know, myself, my identity and who I am. I actually have do not pet across my collarbone, <laughs> which is one of my favorites. And unfortunately, when I get my test piece, that will be covered up, but added somewhere else because it is just such a prolific thing for me. And that has a little bit of a backstory in um, I was dating this guy, you know, um, not to get into a sad story, but I was, you know, I was a drug addict and I was dating this guy and I was making all the wrong life choices and everything else. And I was at Exotica in 2021, I think it was, or 2022. Yeah, in Miami. And he cheated on me while I was there. And I had a tattoo that said pick for him because, again, I was, you know, on substances and absolutely stupid. Um, and my best friend, you know, that was kind of my decision of like, okay, it's time to clean up my life. It's time to hunker down and focus and 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 get my stuff together and everything else. And um, my best friend took me for a tattoo appointment. And she's like, well, what are you going to get? You know, we're both getting tattoos. And I'm like, I'm going to get do not. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm going to get do not on the other side of my pet. And she's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, because I'm like a service Skylar, you know, like do not pet the animal. She's working. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's, it's partially a warning and partially, you know, but it's that, I get that, that meaning for me of like, I had this person that was, you know, really not great for me in my life. And it was like reclaiming that of like, oh, you want me to be this submissive little pet? All right, no, I'm, I'm she bites, she bites. Um, another tattoo, like I have this whole "I love me" arm on my right forearm. Um, I have a bunch of song lyrics that mean things to me, but I have my best friend's last text before he passed away. Oh. Um, it says, "I love you, Sky Pilot," which was my nickname um, from him. And very few people actually get to call me Sky Pilot. That is something very important. Like, if you are very important to me, then, like, yeah, I have no problem with you calling me Sky Pilot. Anybody else? I'm like, no. Right. Um, right. But, yeah, no, I got his last text, and that's, that's a really important one to me. That's cool, though. Um, I mean, that's, yeah. that's really awesome. And I mean, with the meaning, like you mentioned, I mean, you got yourself out of that bad place. And I mean, you're here and you're with us now and you're here just doing a lot of amazing things. I think it's wonderful to see you just, you know, showcase your essence and essence and stuff like that, because I think we, you know, we all learn, we all grow. You know what I'm saying? It's not a sob story at all. I think a lot of people can relate to it. I'm just happy to see you doing your thing and just happy to see you just continue to grind. So, I mean, the grind never stops and we as people don't stop. So I'm glad to see you just doing your thing. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And that is one thing that I, I try and like, you know, push in a lot of my social media presence and everything else is like, yes, there's the sales aspect of like, you know, please subscribe, please, you know, buy my clips and whatever else. But there's also the, you know, I want people to know that like recovery is possible. You know, I want people to know that they're not alone. And yes, this like pretty girl who's taking all these pretty pictures on the internet and blah, blah, blah. You know, she went through struggles as well. I won't get into all the struggles that I went through, but that is one that I am, I am exceptionally, it is my proudest moment. It is the thing that I am proudest of, of any of my accomplishments in the world is like, no, I did that. And I did that myself and I'm here and I, you know, I'm having a great time now. <laughs> Good for you. That's awesome. Thank it's, you. It's it's the community. Like to put up what she said, like there's that sales aspect of like subscribing to social medias. But I mean, at the end of the day, we're all inspiring through our words and our actions. And I mean, if you have that presence of just showcasing that within your social medias and you as your overall being, being mind, body, and soul, I think a lot of that goes into it. And especially there's a lot of people out there that, you know, need just to have that kind word. I mean, it's the little subtleties that we mentioned, a certain hello or what have you. If you could brighten someone's day and evoke that emotions and put smiles on faces, it may sound cheesy it may sound cliche but it's honest and it's genuine and i think you can touch a lot of people's hearts and touch a lot of people's lives with that so i mean you mentioned recovery we mentioned mental health i mean there's a lot that goes into it it's something that really needs to be taken to the focal point just continuing to stress the point of be kind stay low stay wonderful and just be loved man it's a blessing all in all at the end of the day absolutely i i totally agree on that you know the the fetish community in itself is is one of my saving graces i will say um, you know, I'm kinky personally. I know it's crazy. <laughs> um, 
Um, but one of the first things, you know, in that moment, my, you know, one of my really low moments just got cheated on. Oh my God. I'm, I'm sitting and, uh, Bambi wild. She's, uh, she was miss, uh, nude universe at one point and things like that. She's a friend of mine. I used to work at her club in, in Illinois and she was there and I, you know, cried in her lap. And then I went over to the dungeon at Exotica and I, I got tied up and suspended for the first time. I was up for like an hour, you know, and, uh-huh. and then, at the dungeon, I, I I told the rigor what was going on. I had made friends with you know his wife the day before. I told them what is going on. You know I'm 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 really just at a low point and blah blah blah. And in order to keep me from you know going out and making bad decisions, I basically spent the entire day in the dungeon and I got handed around to whoever was working whatever station. They just kept me busy and kept that you know. And I had a bunch of aftercare and everybody's handing me cookies and water and I'm like. Hey. And so, you know, getting into the fetish community and, and, you know, then incorporating, I never, I, when I got into the fetish community, I realized that like, you know, wrestling and fighting were fetishes. And so as soon as I discovered that, I'm like, oh, this is what I want to do because I have this background. I enjoy fighting, you know, I enjoy wrestling. And so I think this is really where I'm going to go forward with it is like, this is something that definitely appeals to me, but you know, the fetish community is, has definitely kind of given me a, a space to, you know, be myself and, and, and be healthy and be happy and, and not, you know, go back to those really bad habits that I used to have. Yeah. It's, it's like Sly and the Family Stone, man. Thank you for letting me be myself again. And I think where you are right now and being true to yourself, I think is wonderful. And I mean, like you mentioned, and Tommy can equate to this because he's a fan, like we talk about the Bay fights, what have you. And we talk about just mm-hmm. wrestling and everything being like fetishes. A lot of people don't even realize, like a lot of people like a good headlock, a little takedown, if you will. It's spicy in the fetish side of things. There's just something about body worship, if you will, or just something that really is just very enticing to one. And I really think it's great to see like we talk about the uniqueness of people and their preferences and how we really open up the mind and the horizon so to speak with the fetish community i think it's wonderful just to see for a lot of people expand the horizons and hey you may have not been into it but maybe once you give it a try you like it so there's something for everybody variety is key but also at the end of the day let the flag fly if you will not the freak flag but just let your overall self go out there and explore man that's what it's about in all in life oh michael it's a total goddamn freak flag i mean and i didn't even have to fly it i knew it i was like four years goddamn old in Carolina. all right brother (laughs) it's not even a freak flag it's just the way you're wired dude and that's there's hey turns out i i'll tell you what i mean there's no secret about my age I'm 24 years old. It's been a rough one. <laughs> that that uh, when I was a youth growing up, all the things I dreamed that I would live in a world where all the stuff that I liked was not only accepted, but that there was a world where I had a lot of access to it. And this looked like literally something I was like, this, this needs to happen. I need to have this in my life. And I never would have thought in the early 80s that everything that I wanted to be an acceptable part of the world is now like I'm at well I'm actually involved in a lot of these companies and things now I'm like I can't believe I even get to do a freaking drawing show with the people who are doing the content that I like I mean shit I guess it doesn't get any better than this does it no I, I think to add an old ad will include Miss Skylar Calico over here. I think what's great about it too is as well when I got started doing interviewing stuff and I've interviewed talents of all different facets of life. Like I'm a music and wrestling guy, but I also do like fetish modeling. I do also do like modeling as a whole, whether it be adult entertainment or what have you. People would either question and people question a lot in life, like why? And I say, why not? Like you talk about the freak fly flying, why not let it fly? I think a lot of people don't in life just really don't ask to just ask why too much. And actually at the end of the day, just go for it. I think perseverance and passion and persistence, if you will, dare I say perspicacity goes a long way. And I include you in this, Skylar. I think that where you are with those letter P words that I just mentioned there, I think it does show within your work and also where your journey wants to go in life. And I think a lot of people can really obtain and I really ascertain a lot of knowledge from it. Absolutely. You know, I, I really just more than anything I want, you know, one part of me wants to be perceived as a hot girl. Not going to lie. I like when people watch my content and, and my fetish content and everything else. The weird thing is like how many fetishes I've shot 
and I've walked into it and I'm like, Hey, yeah, I can do this. This is fine. You know, it's not really my thing. And then, you know, I'll shoot it three, four times and I'll be like, fuck, is this starting to become my thing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> The list goes on like I never thought, you know, tickling is a great example. I am super duper duper ticklish. Right. So I started shooting tickling stuff. It was really huh. my my personal. It was that it never really, you know, got me hot and bothered or anything else. And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm I'm I start doing the tickling thing and I'm like, oh hey, this is hey. You know, I think that a lot of it goes into like just the human interaction part of it and things like that, you know, wrestling per se isn't entirely my fetish, but I do love like rough housing with a partner, like that back and forth struggle for, you know, who's on top, blah, blah, blah. If I can put you in a headlock three times, I'm fucking happy. Um, so, you know, that's really <laughs> where I, <laughs> I am. I'm a, I'm a brat. I'm a little spitfire. I, you know, you better be in an, I'm not going to say you have to be in really good shape to be with me, at least not fit, like, appearance-wise, but you at least have to be able to, like, you know, pick me up or throw me around or whatever else, because I will tackle you. What if you could uh, just so... run really fast? Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's no fun. I don't like a runner. No. <laughs> hey, this is time. That's about uh, the only skill I have. <laughs> running? That's the only like skill that Tommy has. Tommy's a runner. He's he's the he's faster than the world track record of Michael Johnson is what he is. That's what you are, Mr. Tommy Bell. You are fast. Yeah, Skippy. Okay. As well, he as he draws this incredible drawing. Yes. <laughs> it's the skill you have. You can run. <laughs> well, I Skylar, I go, I want to put this out there that I, even though our paths have just crossed. You've been so outstanding in your support of what I'm doing, especially not knowing me and going, well, who the hell is this guy? What the hell's going on now? Like, it's, I understand that what I do is something a bit out of the norm and probably not what you get kind of hit up with each day. Like, hey, can I draw you? Would you want to be on this little drawing show? And da, da, da. And you've been so amazing with your support. And that helps fire up the creativity you know i have a, a regular day job and i have a wife and family and everything else and when you get to the point in the day when it's time to start doing some drawing uh you need different things to get you fired up about doing it and when i see that kind of support like you've been doing that's that's all it is just a little bit here and there and i'm like i'm ready to go and tackle this thing and make it like the best thing that I've done ever, you know, always trying to make something great, but the better it is, I think the, the better the spotlight is on everything that you do, not just for me, but for this entire industry and your talent, you know, is just like I was telling Michael, I said, this, this is incredible. This is really fucking hot. And, uh, that's yeah, all I got. You. Honestly, you know, like, I, one of my favorite things to, you know, hear from, from fans or, or whoever, or to see is like when people draw me or make art of me or I inspire art or whatever else, you know, I've, I've had a couple of people, you know, it started out with the TikTok videos. I, I was the TikTok girl that started out and I'd say something and somebody, I had a, a illustrator who'd make a, a comic of it. And one day it was a rant about how much I love green beans. You know, and so he drew me with green beans hanging out of my mouth going, green beans, fuck yeah, you know, and things like that. Um, the art has always been when people take the time, you know, anybody can send a message that says, hey, you're really sexy, right? right? Anybody can send a message that says, hey, you know, you're really hot. When when an artist or, or somebody who has a passion that takes time and things like that says, I want to draw you. That shows, you know, to me, I don't know, this is just, you know, my weird brain of like, Hey, you're investing time and energy to this. This isn't just the like what you do in text. This is like somebody is actually, you know, like I made a little bit of a difference in this person's life, or you know, this they saw something in, in this or whatever else. And so for me, that's the ultimate honor is when you know people do fan art of me or draw me or whatever else. No, you know, no matter how good you think it is, how bad you think it is, whatever. Because I've had people go, Well, I don't think it's that good, you know. I'm sorry I didn't draw you better. And I'm like, dude, I don't care. You know, right. it's just the fact that, you know, I made an impression on somebody enough that they were like, wow, now I want to draw you. And I'm like, me? me? Right. <laughs> right. And 
Well, and I'll show you right here because you and Tyler Lynn had enough of an impact where when I pull this up just the right way, you could see what I've been doing, I'm trying to fight the light here, but you can see what I'm doing with your hair. And just a few colors. Yeah, you need to go to slide shave. <laughs> I tried and I, I tried to about that. I was like, how is that gonna go? <laughs> but yeah, like this, this is this stuff that I'm talking about. And it it does. It's a total, it's a total investment because it takes a lot. It's weird, but like I'm I'm a super energetic guy for being as old as dirt, which is really funny. <laughs> but like it does take um every drawing takes something out of me there's there's an investment that's a part of tommy bell that is captured over about 12 days of creating a drawing from start to finish and when it's done and i've signed it sealed it and that's that uh i take a huge deep breath in about two days off of social media and everything just to recharge my self because i've poured you know, not everything just works automatically. I wish it did. I totally wish it did. Even the hair that I've been working on for the past, whatever, I don't know, 40 minutes or whatever. Um, you know, like it's always a, it's a, it's this, it's a different kind of fight. <laughs> it's the one I'm trained for. I tell you, um, where you're working on something you're like, that's not working right. What do I do? Da, 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 da. And you're fighting the colors back and forth with trying to duplicate what's there, you know? So, um, but yeah, like I, Michael will tell you, I'm a huge cat fight, female fighting fanatic. And um, that's where my freak flag flies at. But I also I was supposed huge... to have a real cat fight, but I don't really know what happened with. I mean, I'm open to the idea as long as there's no like face slapping of right. cat fights and the only reason i don't do face slapping is um i can't guarantee what will or will not happen after i get face slapped Ooh, um, well, fair i'd like to yeah. see i'd like to see her hook up with uh michael i'd like to see her hook up with gia love down there in florida oh my goodness our, yes. our buddy gia love gia love who does a lot Amazing. of cat fighting videos yes mm -hmm. she um, is a great friend the only thing about Gia is, is she's she's got some some size on me. Um, I, I've worked a couple of events with Gia. We we walked together in the Dunedin Wear Arts Festival, uh, Wear Art Show for a designer called Artemis and Aphrodite. Um, we were both there, and that's my only thing. Kind of where I've struggled with the cat fighting is I want to fight somebody of a similar size, um, with similar skills. Michael and I will, yeah. will research and think this over. <laughs> I've, had, I've had a couple of, of, you know, people reach out to different people. Um, I think her name's Nadia White. Oh, Nadia okay. White. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So she's one that I have my eye on because we are very, very similarly sized. And that's my main thing is like, you know, I've, I've worked with Bay Fights and a couple of girls that, they're, they're just so much taller than me or they weigh more than me or whatever else that I'm like, hey, I would pick you up. <laughs> but, um, and I'm not saying that I can't weight wise, but it's just a, a, a thing of mass where I can't bounce and pick you up over my head because you are a lot longer than I am. And it's kind of like when you have a really awkward table that you're like, this is not heavy enough that it should be a two man job, but it's really just awkward to pick up. <laughs> like I've 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 encountered that like a time or three where I'm like I'm trying to do this oh there's a lot more of you than I am that I am wingspan um so that that's kind of why I wanted to stick to somebody in my size class is is more just so that way it's not an absolute you, you get into a, a little bit of a like disadvantage right. when no, you know I'm you have actually... a, a much larger and a much smaller. Well, and I actually prefer cat fights that are the most evenly matched. And people who, who know me know this already. The more evenly matched, the better it is. Michael and I have talked about it. I've talked about it with different people. So I'm going to rack my brain and get back to you on that. That's for sure. All right. Yeah, I have no problem shooting like regular like wrestling videos with people who are bigger than me. Um, <laughs> but when it comes to an actual competitive cat fight, because a lot of times there is 
money on the line, you know, like, okay, right. so we both get paid X amount and then the winner gets paid, you know, an X extra amount. Right. Um, so at that point I'm like, all right, well, I want the biggest fighting chance because I am also an extremely competitive person. (laughs) 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 Like I said, when I came into Bay fights, I was like, I'm going to dominate, I'm going to win. And then they're like, yeah, you're not going to win this one. And I was like, are you serious? No. Well, that's what made that intro to, to this clip. So incredible. I mean, it was just, there was so much energy and, and again, I, I I can't go on enough about that clip, but uh, yeah, that's why that's why that initial interview to me was like so worth it. I wish they would have interviewed Tyler Lynn at the same time or whatever, and that would have been kind of neat. Because again, what that does to me is it mentally balances out that evenness, you know, yeah. between the two. But I I really can't say anything bad about. <laughs> premise of it was just that like i caught her off guard um if you remember correctly was just like all of a sudden i was coming in there was another video that i did with oh god what was her name i've only worked with her once Uh, another video i did with another girl with a uh pipe wrench that basically (laughs) i i came in and i was like man i've lost you know three three fights at this point or whatever i need to really prove myself so i'm gonna even it out and you know um Mm -hmm. That was in touching underwear. So people really just like when I go all out, apparently, and and just catch these bitches, you know, <laughs> completely blindside them and just knock them into pools and, and hit them with pipe wrenches and everything else, which I'm cool with. I don't fight fair. I never have. <laughs> that's that's right there. It's the epitome of buck 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 wild, but at the same time, it's that buck wildness, if you will, that goes into it. And I think when you, you talk about coming people coming off guard, I mean, you were talking about the size differential. I mean, and I'll make a Rhea Ripley here reference here, Skylar. It's like when Rhea Ripley was wrestling Ivy Nile for the uh, Raw Women's Championship a few weeks ago on Raw. And mind you, Ivy Nile is a short girl, but she's a power lifter and she's strength. She's a little cutie beauty. But at the same time, like I like that stuff of just the fact that. There's something that's really cool just about the fact of just the size differences and the size statures. But I think what you you're talking about here is just fighting and just coming out with pipe wrenches and everything just in general. It's the proverbial foreign object, if you will. So, I mean, like you talk about liking the heels. I mean, that's some heel esque right there, man. So I got to say it fits right into the whole story of what you're about and just the overall vibe. I could happily play a heel for the rest of my life. Like I, I hate being a hero. I want to be the villain. I have always wanted to be the villain but i want to be that likable villain you know like we were talking about ria it does it fantastically where you're like man (laughs) you know like that is kind of the character that i always want to have that i really enjoy playing is that like crazy nasty bitch like still you know she you don't know what she's gonna come up with she's here to win some hell or high water however she needs to win but she's gonna win you know she she played dirty um I, even in my real life you know actual 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 like fights you know I, I mentioned i was a dancer and i i still dance occasionally and things like that i've been in quite a few locker room fights um Ooh. i broke a girl's tailbone one time another i bounced heads off lockers whatever else it's it's all about like using your surroundings and not fighting fair <laughs> at that point because like somebody's actually trying to hurt you but I am the kind of person that like I'll knock you on your ass and then stick my hand out to you and go all right you, you ready to act right you know let's talk about this like adults I'm gonna like you need to incapacitate the assailant and then you hey okay that was not okay and now we need to talk about this like adults well, so no, I, I, Michael we got a firecracker <laughs> oh, I will say this it's kind of like when you're in high school and I've seen a lot of these when you're just walking down the hall and all of a sudden two girls are coming out the bathroom cat fighting. And then like, I've seen it like, like what she's mentioned. Cause there's a lot of girls that I went to high school with that were like that. They were like buck while they were getting into a fight, but they'd also pick them up so you can act right. It's a disciplinary action, but also at the same time, sometimes beating is fundamental. So, I mean, sometimes you got to go buck wild. Sometimes you got to be that spit fire. Sometimes you got to show that edge, if you will, about what you are and what you're about. And I mean, there's a popular saying out right now, fuck around and find out but at the same time you know sometimes it's necessary i mean i don't advocate a lot but sometimes it's necessary and i mean hey 
Some it is what it is, as they say. Sometimes it bees like that, to quote Pink in her song. There you go. You know, I mean, there's a lot of ways that you can look at it, but yes, I totally completely understand where you're coming I'm from. I'm a big like do no harm to take no shit. So I've never started an actual fight. Right. I've never started an actual fight. These are all girls who, you know, were like drunk or angry or they were, you know, pissed off about something else. I was the nearest object, I guess, and that's where they um but you know they they just get these you know i'm gonna attack you and i'm like you really shouldn't do that like i would really highly advise against that and i have told several people that and then they do it anyways and i'm like all right and that's an equivalent of go around and find out i'm never going to start a fight i'm never going to deliberately put my hands on somebody in order to start something but um fuck around and find out <laughs> so you're pretty well Yeah, so you're pretty much like Texas Ranger in Talladega Nights. You come at him like a spider monkey, is what you're saying. Kind yes. of okay. Yeah. Sure. Well, and Skylar and Michael, as we get ready to ramp up season one of Sketchy and Funny, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna I'm gonna lay this out there for this discussion. You guys are both gonna be shocked by this, and maybe this explains why I am the way I am and I gravitate towards what I do. I never got to see a high school cat fight in real life. Like that did oh. not happen. Never, not once. And I literally did not miss school because of that. I'm like, nope, it was always two doors down or somewhere else or whatever. And I never, ever was witness. And maybe that's why I am the way I am. You know what? <laughs> Me neither. It wasn't until I was an adult that people started trying to fight. <laughs> like when I was in high school, it just it didn't happen. It didn't. Right. Like I went to a very small northern massachusetts school and it did not happen like we'd hear about it like oh did you know three years ago this kid got into a fight and they're like yeah they suspended him for two weeks and so my school just came down like so hard on everybody that we were all scared to fight we're like yeah well i'll take this up with you on facebook yeah <laughs> oh, so to add to her with the over here massachusetts school over here i'm going to say so i I grew up on the Northeast, Long Island, New York, East Islip High School. So for those who are unaware of East Islip High School, that's the same high school that Ralph Macchio attended and people like Boomer Esiason attended back in the day and graduated from. Uh, East Islip High School, when you're on Long Island, folks, I mean, it's just, there's fights. They, they don't give a F, if you know what I'm saying. We don't give a fuck, so to speak. Myself, not included in that. But I grew up with a lot of kids that just like to fight, like to just scrap, if you will. So... I guess I gotta got used to it and also being a New Yorker, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff like that where you try to divide it. But I remember clear as day, the girl I was coming out of lunch, girls coming out of the friggin' bathroom, grabbing some her, if you will, right there, right there. There was some her, <laughs> some hands, if you will. So I mean, I think that was the only one time I think I ever saw, it, but stuff like that happened. You know, all of a sudden you just see fists are flying, hair are flowing, just mm, 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 mm. that's mm -hmm. what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've definitely <laughs> seen it in strip clubs more. Yeah, I'm clubs more. <laughs> that's, 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 you want to see a really good, genuine cat fight? Sure. Um, yeah. Strip clubs. There's a clinic called uh, Stripper Locker Room. Mm -hmm. They have some, like, those are real fights. Those are, those are legitimate and they're great and yeah that's that's the best place to find actual like real life cat fight not that i'm saying that anyone should sneak into a stripper's locker room but like <laughs> please don't you will get arrested so quickly um probably your ass beat but if right. you're into that still don't do it um but yeah no strip club locker rooms are one of those like but some clubs I've seen fights pop off uh, once a week, if not more. Other clubs, wow. depending on how good the management is, you'll never see it. Like, they'll fire girls as soon as there's, like, even a little tiff or anything. They're like, all right, y'all need to, like, take a couple weeks to months to years off. Um, From here, you need to go somewhere else because we're not going to tolerate that. But, yeah, I've worked at some clubs that you're every week you hear some, you know, like, it's... It, yeah, it's like a legitimate cat fight, and you're like, oh, damn, well, she's missing a chunk of her hair. Mm -hmm. Damn. Damn. Yeah, All those right. Are vicious. Well, Skyler, I think I've just reached about a point here where if I add any more color to your hair, I'm actually going to add more color to your hair than what you've got. But kind of can see how we're doing that. 
pencil's getting tiny. Look at that. <laughs> getting down there. But so that's where we're going to leave this show and season one. And uh, I will hop off of the art table and flip the camera around to say a proper goodbye. But this is where we're at with the drawing and that. Not too bad. I think this one is going to turn out amazing, especially once I get all the other details and stuff done. This is a huge tribute to the hard work that you and Tyler Lynn did. I'm hoping for more. This is going to be an amazing piece when it's finished. I can't wait to show it to you. And I just want to thank you again from, from me to you. Thank you so much for all your support. It's insane, insanely cool. And, um, you know what? I want to open up the floor to you. Michael, you're going to be impressed. I'm going to try to do this for you, buddy. Okay. This is usually Michael's part. Here we go, Michael. Tell me how I do. Okay. All right, Skylar. Uh, I'm going to open up the floor to you to give all of the people who are watching this show on whatever platform it may be. Let them know how we can reach you on social media, follow you, like you, and all that great stuff. Absolutely. So all of my socials are under Skylar Calico, S-K-Y-L-A-R-C-A-L-I-C-O. Um, there's quite a few now. Um, I do have subscription sites and all of those things as well. But in general, um, Twitter is a great way to get a hold of me. Instagram, um, follow me on TikTok. Only fans, fansly, loyal fans. I think I have a couple others, but I can't remember. They're all on a list. Um, but yeah, just anything that Skylar Calico is me, anything that is like Skylar Calico underscore is not me. Mm -hmm. Let me put that out there because like every once yeah. in a while they'll pop up. They'll be like, is this you? And I'm like, no, no, no. Um, but four, yeah. Four, four, seven, seven, six, five. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's at the end. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, but thank you so much again for, for drawing me and having me on here. You know, I, I love doing podcasts. I love doing you know, little interviews and just chatting with people and, and, and really letting, you know, fans see my personality outside of just like, oh, here's a sexy clip that you can buy. Like, no, like actually get to know me. And, you know, that way you can be like, hey, I like her and I want to support her. <laughs> and so just, I am another alternative hot girl. Um, so again, thank you so much for having me on. You're very welcome. And that's part of what this, that's a huge part of what this drawing show is all about is showcasing all of your talents everything that you do it's not just about the drawing it's it's about you thank you uh, guys lfcfights.com for all your lingerie fighting championships needs man you can check out tommy bell art sketchy and funny on there my show lfc podcast beauty strength and dominance like skylar mentioned follow her on twitter instagram facebook tickety talk with the heart tick tock you don't stop and all those link trees if you will baby you can check out some of her amazing photos like tommy like our boy dc don cross and his calendars a beautiful set she did for don cross photography check her out check her out on bay fights check her out on so many different avenues of entertainment mint because you will not be disappointed and you can check out tommy bell art on the spotify the youtube the twitter the instagram the facebook all your social media saturation if you will all your social media needs get it because if you don't and then you don't got it well yeah so check us all out on all forms <laughs> of social media and uh skylar as i say with my show beauty strength the dominance of three elements that make women the work of art that they are and i include you in those sentiments and tommy bell wrap it up like a tip cup say what what let them know okay well it's really really hard to follow that with anything that's good other than by saying um that my wife showed me on tiktok that not only by my astrological sign do I have 99 people crushing on me, makes me pretty goddamn cool. But apparently my job, you guys, check this out. According This according to TikTok, so this is no bullshit. My job shouldn't be an artist. I should be a rapper. Okay. I'm not going to do that. I buy that album. <laughs> I, I, buy that. I buy that album. I would. <laughs> You'd be getting ripped off. Well, Slim taught me. <laughs> MC Bell in the house, man. Oh, well, I have a, a whole name for my rap album, but we'll get into that at a later date. <laughs> um, this has been I an expect, amazing I expect to hear it and I expect to get royalties. <laughs> she wants the royalties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, this has been one hell of a ride. Season one, sketchy and funny comes to a close. 
Gang, thank everybody for watching. I want to thank each and every one of my special guests. There's been so many, but this episode has been outstanding. Thank you, Skylar Calico, for making this an amazing episode. Your support is outstanding. And this drawing is coming along, and it's going to kick ass. Michael, thank you for being my wingman. Thank you for being my editor. And thank you for bringing some structure to this show as the first three or four episodes are certain to tank <laughs> you're welcome my dude and i'm happy to be along the ride with you and uh, skylar once more thank you so much and we'll see y'all for season two man all right well we'll see you then everybody thank you so much for watching i gave you the tommy bell dozen that's 11 episodes for season one and we will see you again for season two take care everybody Thank you for listening to another edition of Tommy Bell Art Sketchy and Funny. Follow Tommy Bell on all forms of social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Tommy Bell Art. Tommy Bell Art Sketchy and Funny is now on Spotify and on the VIP section of the official LFC Laundry Fighting Championships website. Follow our guest Skylar Calico on all forms of social media at Skylar Calico. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in Season 2. Thank you.